Welcome to Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. Coach Randy Taylor is bringing his 40 plus years of knowledge to you. This is Taylor Scouting. And now here's Coach Randy Taylor. We're back here with Taylor Scouting Podcast. Uh, I'm Coach Randy Taylor and uh, just fired up to have one of my favorite people uh, a longtime great friend, uh, Coach Kevin Cosgrove, with me today. Uh, we'll get into Coach Cosgrove and talk about recruiting. I want to talk about the anatomy of recruiting because Coach Cosgrove, folks, is a guru. He is a great recruiter and, and somebody that we can all learn from. So this will be a, a great podcast for uh, high school coaches, for athletes, for parents. Uh, we will do shows uh, on Up On Game Network, uh, Up On Game Presents, Taylor Scouting Podcast. Uh, we will have players, parents, college coaches, NFL coaches, and gurus like we've talked about. Uh, my background is over 40 years in college football at UCLA, Minnesota, Illinois, and UNLV. Uh, remind you guys to subscribe to Up On Game Presents on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Please rate and review our podcast and follow us on all social platforms by searching Up On Game Network, or you can search for me on Twitter at our Taylor FB Scout. And when you get a chance to go to YouTube, watch all of the full episodes of Taylor Scouting on the Up On Game Network YouTube channel. Just search Up On Game Network. So that's the business side of that, Coach Cosgrove. Now we are ready to roll with some, uh, some anatomy of recruiting is what we're calling this podcast because of your uh, abilities and, and long time efforts. Uh, welcome coach. Appreciate you coming on with us. Well, thanks for having me, coach Taylor. It's good to see you again. We, we were together yesterday out at the, uh, Cup of coffee. Uh, in, in San Diego at the, at the breakfast. What do we have? Uh, a little coffee. And, yeah, it was great out on the, wa on the water. Coach Cosgrove it, it was uh, currently he's, uh, at, uh, Long Island University, and uh, he does get to see the ocean, but it's on the other coast, and we wanted him to get uh, a, a feel. And and his beautiful wife Shelly and uh, my wife Christine have been longtime friends. What forty years, Coach? Have we known each other? Every bit of that, Rand. It goes back to you know I started at the University of Illinois in nineteen eighty. So it's been, it's been a long time. That's when we first started giving kids rides from, oh no, that was illegal. <laughs> that's, that's when, that's when we were recruiting guys like, uh, we talked about this yesterday. Some of these guys like Mark Tuck and Archie Carter and all of these names, Mo Bias and Vince Osby and David Williams, all those kids, right? Yeah. We had so much fun. Bob Sebring, right? Mark I mean, there were some yeah, Mark Taggart, some great names. Uh, I still, do you, I'm sure you still get these guys on Facebook, right? You know what? Uh, I don't have Facebook, but Shelly does. So I, I stay in contact with them. But, you know, we, I, I keep in contact with a lot of these guys. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm out in California right now, heading back to Long Island uh, tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I, I've, through the years, we've had a lot of players out of California, you know, when we were at University of Illinois. And uh, some some great guys, and, and built some great relationships, and and still keep in contact with a lot of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Coach uh, Cosgrove was forty some years, or, or the number of years I always get screwed up. It's my old uh, CTE catching up to me. But he, one of the best defensive coordinators, in my opinion, in college football uh, for a long time. Uh, Coach Cosgrove. Uh, is very successful at at schools. Coach, g give us a list of your schools. Well, started out at the University of Illinois. I was there eight years with uh, with Mike White. Uh, from there, I went to uh, Southeast Missouri for for a year and Colorado State for a year, and then uh, 
took a job at the University of Wisconsin under Barry Alvarez, and I was there 14 years. Uh, went to Nebraska from there, to Minnesota from there, uh, New Mexico, uh, LSU, Texas Tech, and now I'm at LIU. And so I'm sure there were a lot of differences, a lot of things similar at, at Moorhead State and at LSU. Is that right? We're, we're very, very similar. Very similar. So, I, I, so, you know, I never coached the season at Moorhead State. I, I was very fortunate. Uh, I was a graduate assistant at Illinois for three years. And, and after that third season, uh, Steve Loney was the head coach at Moorhead State and gave me my first opportunity. He hired me and, uh, you know, just I was a young coach, a young guy, just three years out of college. And uh, I remember when Mike uh, called me in June, I was there, I was at Moorhead for spring ball. Mike called me in June and, and, and said he may have an opportunity for me, but I'd be interested in coming back to, to the University of Illinois. And I said, uh, I would, I have to talk to my head coach before I make that decision. You know, Steve gave me an opportunity. And uh, I remember going into Steve and Steve, I got a chance to go back to Illinois, but I want you to know I I appreciate the opportunity you gave me. And if you tell me you'd like me to stay, I'll stay. And he looked at me like I had two heads. He says, are you nuts? You got an opportunity to <laughs> go back to the Big Ten. You need, you need to go. So I'm very appreciative for that. But, um, uh, you know, that he, you know, he was, you know, so generous in, 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 in giving me that go ahead to if you go back to the University of Illinois and and that's where my career really started uh, being full time at the University of Illinois in 1983 and our our first year there my first year being full time we won the Big 10 championship and went to the Rose Bowl so uh you know I guess I got Steve Loney a lot to thank for for that yeah the uh and and that was a time that uh we got to go to a bowl game together there were a couple other times where I, I bumped into Coach Cosgrove when he was on the Wisconsin staff and I was at UCLA and we played them in the Rose Bowl again and then in the Sun Bowl and I'm 0 for 2. But uh, but I, I love my brother. And so uh, uh, those were fun times. Uh, you had some great players. You know, and I think we'll, we'll talk recruiting because that that's really uh, – what this podcast is all about. And I think one of the great things that you have coach, uh, you've always been genuine with the kids and up front with these, with the athletes. They, they always knew where you were coming from and they always knew that you cared about them. I and mean, is that, is that kind of how you approach this? Cause we'll talk about relationships in a little bit. And, and is that how you uh, approach this whole process? I, I think the number one thing, Randy, you know, you we'll talk about relationships, but the, building a trust within that player and you, uh, you know, and that, that's where relationships start. You know, if you, if you, if you can't feel like, or, 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 or really trust somebody, it's hard to build a relationship and recruiting is relationship. So. And players know, right. They know if you're, uh, they, uh, they know if you or, they know if you're a real dude or fake. Yeah, dude. no question. No. And it doesn't take them long. And they, and that's a that's an important and part of this whole thing. Uh, to talk about relationships, uh, Coach, talk about, you know, we all say relationships is the biggest thing in recruiting and all, all that's so important. And, and so it go through the, the the prospect and the parent and the high school coach and, and the third party. So how do you – how do you go about building that relationship? And is there any kind of uh, key to success? Well, I th yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, you mentioned a lot of different things there, the, the high school coach and, and the families and things like that. Uh, they're all important. Uh, I think it's the number one thing is, is, is build a relationship with, with, the, with the, the schools in your area and the coaches in your area. And, and they have to get a trust in you. You know, they got to believe in you and, 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 and it's hard to do that when, when you, you talk about it, but, you know, really you have to get a, a player from their school to actually, for them to see it, right. you know, what you've done for those kids. And, and there's a lot of different schools that, that I've recruited kids out of that I've recruited more than one kid out of that school and, and the coaches build a trust in you. But then, you know, then, then when you find the players, uh, 
you know, you, you have to build a trust in them and, and, and they got to feel and, and know that you're going to take great care of them. I always made it a point when I, the first time I made a contact with a player to talk to the parent. Uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, if they weren't home, the next time I talked to them, I talked to the parent because, uh, you know, I know, you know, I, I've had sons recruited and it was important for me to get to know the coach and, and feel that they would take care of my son. And, you know, so, uh, you know, a lot of it is you talking and, and selling yourself and selling your university, but they have to believe it too. And then once you get them, uh, they have to see uh, that you're going to take great care of, of, of their son. And, you know, throughout, through the recruiting process, I think it's important that, you know, when you recruit somebody, you know that they have the ability to have success at that school. Uh, no matter where you're at and what level it is, because, you know, you know, if it, you tell a kid one thing and this is the way it's going to be, you're going to be a starter your first year or whatever. And then that doesn't happen. Well, you just broke, uh, you just broke that, that bond you may have had with that young man. So it's important that you're honest with the kids in the recruiting process and, and, and tell them exactly where they stand. And, and I think it's important. It, it, it like the, we talked about the trust, when you have trust in each other, you're going to be honest with each other. You know, I, I don't remember too many kids, you know, telling me, hey, coach, I love that place. I'm, I'm going to be there and then, then not, not come. I mean, every once in a while that happens. But, you know, I think all the kids I've ever recruited throughout the years have felt they could talk to me. And if, and if, if the school I was at wasn't the place for them, uh, they were they were honest with me and up front. And I, and I made them feel that way. I said, you know, don't you don't have to tell me what what you think I want to hear. You know, let's let's be honest in this process. And and maybe I can help you if if we're not the place you want to be. Uh, but let's be honest and always feel like we could talk and 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 again building that relationship with the family and the trust that you have in them. Uh, sometimes you build such a great relationship, it's hard for them to say no. You know, and and uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you build a great relationship, and they do say no. But it's funny, you know. I I look at some kids through the years that, you know, I've recruit I recruited hard, thought I had a chance, and then you know, then it doesn't work out. But you build a relationship with them, and you and you in those those relationships with those kids uh, go on forever too. Right. You know, and, and you you know you make you know, funny stories and and things that's happened through their careers and in, in my career and, you know, what could happen if they would have come and played for me uh, and so on. I, I remember a young man back uh, when we were at Wisconsin, John Holacek, he ended up going to the University of Illinois. But uh, we, we uh, you know, kept a great relationship throughout, through, and we still have one uh, to this day. But he's a kid we didn't get. We we joke a lot about, you know, if you would have come with me, you'd have gone to these Rose Bowls and won these championships. And, you know what I mean? So there, there's a lot of, you know, funny stories throughout the years. But but recruiting is building relationships and, and getting to know families. And then, and then, and then, you know, after they're done playing, it doesn't end. You know, I mean, uh, we keep in touch with I, – I, I can't tell you how many guys throughout the years – yeah, uh, can't uh, keep in touch with. I mean, you go back to University of Illinois. That's over forty years ago. I still have a lot of guys uh, that, and I'm, you, I'm, you too, Randy, that yeah. we've kept in touch through us uh, through through all those years, and still do, and and have relationships, and get together, and and uh, and talk, and it's just you know, it's just such a great feeling, and you know, I, I you know, all the kids that I've had, I've had numbers on, and. And uh, just, you know, I remember Thanksgiving sending them all a note, just say, hey, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to, to recruit you and coach you and get to know your families and the response you get back from them, whether I have to do it through LinkedIn or or uh, or, or if I have their phone or their email or whatever it may be, uh, the contacts that you try to you try to keep throughout the years. Uh, and, you know, because these relationships you build are just unbelievable and the memories uh, that you have and that you share through the years are unbelievable. So, you know, I'm still coaching and I, I coach because I love what I do. Uh, you know, I love every aspect of college football and uh, in the relationship you build and, and, you, and you keep through the years. So.
you you are the uh to me uh the epitome of what a great college football coach should be and because of all the things you're just talking about and you're you're a great football coach as well and and that's also a big part of it uh you've been a linebacker coach defensive coordinator and have had a a great amount of success i I was going to say john holacek now is head coach at loyola uh, academy in in uh, illinois and i'm sure that he's probably steered some kids your way in the in the past well, I never, never did get a kid out of Loyola, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I didn't, I hadn't recruited a bunch, but uh, trying to get a couple of them, but, uh, but, you know, just, you know, keeping the relationship I've had with him through the years and, and the stories that we've had, it's been fun. Yeah. Hey, how much has the third party affected the relationships uh, recently? Well, you know, I remember back, you know, when, you know, I first learned, you know, how to recruit from Mike White. You know, he was the first uh, major college head coach I worked for, and he gave me the, my first opportunity to be a, be a position coach. And, and and one of the things that Mike used to always talk about is, you know, not only you have to coach, but you got to be a great recruiter. Well, okay, well, how, how do you how do you be, become a great recruiter? So I, I he was the you know I learned a lot through him. You know, uh, you know, and and. One of the reasons of the success I've had through recruiting is, is a lot of things I've learned from him uh, on, on what to do and what not to do. But, uh, you know, because that was important to him. You you had to not only coach, but you had to recruit, you know, and in, 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 uh, how to build relationships. And, and uh, you know, he used to talk about third parties. You know, it's not it's not you, you have to get to know more than the family. Uh, when you get in that school, go see the principal, go see the guidance counselor, go talk to the janitor, uh, go talk to the PE teacher, go talk to an assistant coach, uh, find out who's important to this young man and, and and maybe get an edge from them that would give you an advantage in recruiting that certain player. Uh, so I, I learned that as a young coach and, and it, it, it stayed with me throughout my career uh, when I recruit. You know, so, you know, I've learned, learned when you just, you're not just walking into school, you may know the coach a long time, but there's, you know, there's a lot of other people involved in that young man's life uh, in that school. And, you know, sometimes if you, if you find the right person, it may give you that edge you may need to, to close a deal. So. Well, and, and you uh, use a lot of that uh, in, in your evaluation as well, right, coach? Well, yeah, evaluation is not just football. It's 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 what type of person am I recruiting? You know, you want you have to make sure it's the right fit. I mean, there's a lot of really good football players out there, uh, but you know, it has to be the right fit with your players and your team. Uh, so, you know, there's there's a lot of things that go on besides just the the, the football player evaluation piece. It's the, it's the character of the young man, the work ethic he may have. Uh, you know, everything's got to be a fit. So, yeah. Hey, th- there are three periods involved in recruiting in, in college football and, and all recruiting. There's the contact period, the quiet period, and the dead period. Coach, uh, can you explain a little bit just those three things and, and how did you uh, work in those periods? What, what was important to you in each? Well, one, you, you got to make sure you're you're not on the road during a dead period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay away from all of the things you're not supposed well, to do. These are questions you know, about what you should do. You know, well, the contact period is the easiest one because it's, it's all on, you know. Yeah. You're doing your home visits. You're seeing kids. Uh, you know, you're talking to them. And, and the quiet period is this, you, you know, you, you, you can't have in-person contact unless it's on your campus. Uh, and then the dead period is just nobody's on campus. You know, there's, you know, you can still talk, make your contacts on the phone, whatever it may be, but uh, you can't, uh, you, you can't be off campus. You can't have players on campus. So, you know, it's important to know, uh, <laughs> know those. Know, those know the dates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did, it's did important you... that the crew understands those too. Yeah, no question. Did you, uh, well, that's what I told last week, I told them to, to go to NCAA.org and read all that stuff. Yeah. So they knew. Did, and then, did you and have... Then you had the COVID period, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. where, 
you know, I remember I was at Texas Tech at the time and 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 I was there two years and went on the road one time, you know, uh, because, you know, you, 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 you couldn't go off campus and, and it, it was, it was, that was a different time. So that, that's another story, yeah. but uh, yeah. The only thing I think that we uh, still have coming out of that COVID is really the transfer uh, rules kind of changed a lot because of COVID, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the portal and uh, you know, that, uh, you know, there, there's, <laughs> I tell you what, the game has certainly changed since I first got in it to what it is now and how things are happening. You know, back in the day you were locked in, you, you were locked in, you know, if you, if you transferred, you had to sit out a year and go to a junior college, yeah. uh, you know, and, and graduate. Uh, now it's, you know, you get, you get that one transfer time and, and then, you know, you got to make sure that works out. And then uh, because once you once you do do it the first time, you, you're at that place and uh, until you graduate, then you can transfer again and be eligible. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of, you know, different rules that uh, that they have in college football today. And it's it's they get, it's it's changed. It's changed throughout the years, the different rules and recruiting and so on. But I think the I think the biggest thing is, you know, the, the, the kids are the kids, you know, yeah. if they love football, they're the same, you know, right. and, and, and that's why I'm coaching. Cause I love the game. And, and uh, you know, I do plan on doing it for a little while longer uh, because I, I love being around it and, and really don't want it to end, you know, it's keeping you young brother. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look you know, good, man. And yeah, well, your beautiful, I appreciate your, that. Your beautiful wife is keeping you around, so that's yeah, not she bad. Yeah, keeps me on my toes, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, hey, coach, uh, talk about. So we're still uh, talking about the anatomy of recruiting, and we're with Coach Kevin Cosgrove, uh, currently uh, at uh, Long Island uh, University, uh, has been in college football for over forty years. Talk about correspondence. And I know it used to just be writing letters and handwritten notes, but how do you handle what's important to you uh, in your success in recruiting in the correspondence end of it? Well, you know, just, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice to get that, that handwritten note, you know, and not, not a, not a, a copy handwritten note. I mean, a real handwritten note that it has, that will smudge. And not <laughs> and yeah. that a Xerox copy of a handwritten right. note. Right. I, think, I think that's important. I think I think kids could tell that too. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, that handwritten note, and not only to the player, but but to the to the parents, maybe maybe a family member, whatever I'm being, just just to, to make sure they understand that the interest you have, or and, you know, that it's legitimate. But uh, you know, there's. You know, there's there's only really so many forms of communication you can have with a player, uh, and so you have to take advantage of any 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 legal thing that you could do. And uh, I always I always thought, you know, not only staying in contact on the phone, but also you know those notes, uh, just anything that may happen, something positive in the family, whatever it may be, just to let make sure that they know that you're aware of what's going on in their life too, and and uh, communicate that way. What's the, what, what would be, what, what's the most number of handwritten notes you've ever written in a, in a year, in a recruiting cycle? <laughs> oh, gee, I can't, I, I couldn't tell you that, right? It, it, it's been a lot, you know, yeah. it's where your fingers hurt, you know, yeah. and you run, and you go through a lot of pens because you run out of ink. Yeah. Yeah. That, that used to be the thing. And now we're emailing and it has the direct messaging kind of taken over a lot of that. Well, I mean, you know, but it's, there's still nothing like a, a handwritten note, yeah. in my opinion. So, right. you know, you could text, you could text, you could email, you could, you know, you could do all those things. But I think the handwritten notes are important. Yeah. The uh, the, the other thing that uh, one of the other parts of the anatomy is the phone calls, right? And the phone calls and the texts. And, and so my, my question with, to you, coaches, is how does a uh, – an, uh, an experienced football coach like you talk on the phone to an 18 year old. 
And and what what how does that process? How do you prepare yourself? Do you have a script? Do you how do you do that? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's just whatever comes to the top of my head, you know. In, in communication, uh, just you know, you got to make sure it's it's something that it's worthwhile, you know, uh, you know, and real, uh, you know. So you're not talking to them about their favorite, you know, rap song or their favorite, you know. I can't even think of some of the, <laughs> the musicians that they have, you know, Rihanna, right? <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like my players, you know, right now, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a, I like Post Malone, you know, and they, you know, Post Malone. I said, yeah, I know Post Malone. <laughs> you know, I like his music, you know, uh, you know, so, you know, I, I listen a, to a lot of different kind of music. I thought that was a basketball player in Utah. <laughs> Malone. That's not a different thing. Oh, different guy. Different guy. <laughs> Great music, though. Yeah. So, uh, Coach, the, the social media is is now a big part of this. How is is it taking the place of a lot of things that you do or have done in recruiting? Well, you know, there's different schools have different. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the Power Five schools. Uh, have so many people involved in recruiting and there's so much information that could go out, you know, a group of five, uh, not as much. And then FCS, not as much as that and, and so on. So there's, uh, you know, there's different ways to, uh, to, to get things out. I think the more people you have involved, the, the more information you're going to be able to get out, uh, but no matter what, what information does go out, it's got to be important uh, to that certain individual and make sure you're getting the right information to them. Yeah, it's, I think the old days, we just sent something to send something so that they would get something one, once a week, right? And <laughs> yeah, so they, a, you're, right. There, you're there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, now it's easier to let them know that you're there and hopefully you're doing it with good content. Well, there's, there's so many, you know, I mean... Yeah. I mean, just think about back in the day, Rand, you know, I don't even, I don't know if we had ESPN back when we first started. No. <laughs> With ABC and CBS and that's, you watch the games and no, didn't have USA Today, you know, and, and now newspapers are a thing of the past, you know. Right, right. Uh, everything's on the internet and, and uh, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you don't, you don't have a newspaper anymore. You, you, you pull up Twitter and you, you know. <laughs> you know you got different ways to get, you know, what's happening around the world right now. And the access is instant, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. No question. Hey, uh, one of the other recruiting opportunities is camps, right? And, and so you have your on campus uh, camps and then you have the satellite camps or the other camps on different campuses. How did you, how important do you think getting the kid to a camp is and how, how did you use that? Well, I, I think it's real important. I mean, I, that's one of, the key, one of the key areas of recruiting is for a lot of reasons. One, evaluation. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you're going to get exactly what you want to see in that camp and the, the athletic ability of that player. You're also going to, you know, when you get them to camp, you, you get them on campus, right? Get them on campus, you get, it's just an opportunity, another opportunity to get a kid on campus to be around your coaching staff, to be around you, to be coached by you. Uh, I think that, that's important. And then then see how he interacts with the other players in the camp. You know, you watch his competitiveness. Uh, you, you know, does he flinch? You know, uh, is he is he helpful to other players? You know, different types of things that you, you look for in, in, in leaders and in, in the type of player that you want in your program. So, I, you know, camp is, you know, that's the best way, you know, uh, another chance to build a relationship, you know, another chance to, to meet the family, uh, you know, but it, the biggest thing is really to, you know, to see the evaluation, because again, I go back to, you know, you watch the, all this tape and everything and you really like this kid. Well, he may not, and you want to, you want a kid to have a great experience. Okay. Because if he has a great experience and then, you're going to get another kid from that school, another kid from that school. I mean, I, I go I, Hazelwood East down in St. Louis. I can't tell you how many kids I got out of that school because every player I brought in there had success. 
Okay, but just think about it. If if you bring a player in and he doesn't have success, what type of message he's going to give to those other kids? Okay, he'll be in the transfer portal. (laughs) So it's important, and and the camp was another way to to just to you know set your mind straight that yeah, this kid can play. He can have success uh, with us. So it's a great experience. The measurables are really important at camps. I mean, the eyeball test and all. Uh, yeah, things. because I mean, just ran you know this through the years. How many times you've you've this kid's six three to get there, or you get to get and he, you know and he's six foot. Yeah, you know I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, somebody's going to see how big you are. You know, eventually. So you know, be honest. But uh, you know, but you know, measurables are important. You know, I mean, especially at certain positions and. and some at more at certain positions, it's it's a bigger thing than other positions. So, but there, there's you know, camps are so important. I mean, yeah. I, I always thought there were three white lines in college football recruiting, right? So it's height, forty time, and GPA. <laughs> <laughs> Those the three things that that kids will kind of fudge on. Well, you get the GPA is easy from the counselor, you know, in the the school. Unless you can't get it from the school, then then what do you think? Well, I think, again, you you go back to, you know, how many times you've been in that school, the relationships you've built uh, in that school. And, and, uh, you know, it it makes it makes things a lot easier. You you can get the information you want uh, if you have a good relationship with that school the counselors in the school, the coach in that school, uh, whatever it may be, uh, it's important. So, if you have a player and it's really hard to get his transcript, what what's your initial thought about that player? Well, they, they got to worry a little bit, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a transcript. They can't get in school if you don't have a transcript. So, no uh, question. Did do you like to go to camps on other campuses? You know, they're these days they're all on some other college's uh, campus, so Division three or different. Do you like to do that as well, or is that a part of of your Coach Cooper's? Uh, uh, you know, I've done a little plan. bit of it, Rand. I think I think you know some guys do it more than others. Uh, you know, depending on responsibilities and so on. But uh, it's always nice to get around and then see other coaches and and and, and you know tell all war stories and, and so on. And just get, what do you think of this guy? Just opinions that other coaches have. I think that's, that stuff's always good. It's just part of the evaluation process. Right. Is there, um, we've got unofficial visits, official visits. Those are another part of this anatomy and, and things that are very important to colleges. How should players handle those and, and what's the most important part for you in an unofficial and then we'll talk about the official well just i mean you know it's, uh, again there, there any 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 time you can get them on campus it's an advantage for you you know it's it's another chance to build a relationship another chance for them to uh to to be around your coaching staff to be around your players uh you know you never know the little thing that may hit them that they see them just with that extra time on campus that may, that may give you that edge, you know, uh, or, or then may see in something, Hey, I didn't know you had that or, or just, you know, they're just, there's just so many things that could happen. Uh, the more times you, you get them on campus or and get them around you. So, you know, those are get them, get them to a basketball game or another sporting event, all that stuff important. Yeah. Uh, it's all important. Yeah. The um, couple other things that that have kind of come into this anatomy of recruiting uh, recently has been the transfer portal. How do you, first of all, what do you think of it in a generic term? Is it a good thing, a bad thing, or still to be determined? I think, you know, I, I, I don't know, Ryan. I think, I think it's probably a good thing. Uh, you know, you know, there's, there's a reason why the kids get in the portal. I mean, I, I've had, I've had, I've had kids that come, come out of the portal and, and it was, it was an opportunity for, for, for another chance for them. It's a second chance uh, that have, that maybe they didn't have the success they wanted at the other school for whatever reason, there's reasons for everything. 
but then they come and, and it's a new life and and then something positive happens for them. I mean, have it, you know, kid may have not been in the too deep at one place and come to your place and all of a sudden, you know, he picks things up that you that you, that, that you do a little bit faster uh, and, and is able to get on that field and have success. So, you know, it's an opportunity. I, I don't think it's a great thing. I mean, but but it's given a lot of kids hope, you know, uh, and giving them another opportunity because, because again, you know, you go back to what I talked about in the recruiting process uh, earlier. Uh, you know, you want that kid to come to your school and have a have great success. Uh, and you, so, in in order for him to do that, you, you know, you really you got to go through that, like the camps, getting the kids to camp, seeing their not only watching the tape, but seeing their athletic ability in your camps and how they compete and so on. Because if you don't have all that and they come to your school and then you may have missed something and then all of a sudden they're not happy. And so they're going to want to leave. Um, and you could, you, you know, if the kid's happy, he's not going to get in the portal. Yeah. You know, there's some, something happened. Uh, maybe good or bad, you know, maybe, maybe he's not playing. Maybe it is time for him to look for something new uh, for more playing time. There's a lot of different reasons why kids go on portals. Right. You know, and, and uh, you know, I can you know, it, 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 it's an, on an individual basis. It's but the world. It's the world we're in. So you, you just do the best you can it, with it. It right? is what it is right now, and yeah. I, I think it's 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 you know it 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 probably hurts some schools, but but it helps some schools. And you know, you're going to lose a kid to the portal, but you're going to get a kid out of the portal. Uh, so I mean, that's the way it is right now, and uh, I don't see that changing. Uh, yeah. In the future, I think that's the way it is. I think it's I think it's set up pretty good right now, where you know you you can only transfer one time, and and uh, you know it's set up where you know you go to that school, they got to keep you until you graduate, uh, uh, and then if you want to transfer again, well, you know you got to graduate uh, and be a grad transfer. So, right. you know, I think I think it's it's set up probably as as good as it can right now. Uh, will it change? I don't know. You know, the, the game changes. It's changed a lot through the years that we've been in it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta live, you gotta adapt and, uh, and, and get ready for the next thing that's going to happen. Cause that, that it's going to change. Something's going to change again. We all know that. Absolutely. That relationship you built with uh, John Holacek or some of those guys throughout the years uh, that can help you then in the transfer a portal, right? Well, it, it can. It, you yeah. know, it's funny because uh, I go back a long time ago. We we're at Illinois. You weren't there then, but uh, toward the end of our years at Illinois, you know, recruited Jeff George, and uh, Jeff was the was the first player taken in the draft. Uh, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but <laughs> but uh, Jeff Jeff uh, came out of uh, out of high school, and you know it. We knew it was a battle. We, you know, I knew it was between us and Purdue, and Purdue ended up getting him. Uh, but you know, he, for whatever reason, he, you know, I think he started as a true freshman there, and but just didn't. Something wasn't right. But I had that relationship with the coach, and uh, you know, I used to, you know, I just said, hey, you know, just you, you know, if things don't work out, we're we're always there. You know, we're always there, and you know, our our opinion on Jeff hasn't changed because he went to Purdue. You know, and and sure enough, the the following year he he transferred to uh, the University of Illinois. So, uh, you know, again, relationships and trust, and and, and uh, not only with the player uh, and the families, but the coaches. So, I I don't know if you get a lot of conversation about the name, image, and likeness at at Long Island oh, University. No, no. But, but you you have at other schools. How? Prevalent has that been recruiting, and maybe it's more of just uh, anecdotes that you know of. But high school players asking about NIL money. Uh, you know, I don't have to deal with it right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's not like that. Maybe at a, a, a small, a little, little, to a small extent. But uh, you know, it, it really even when I was, at, you know, I've been at Long Island one year. Before that, I was at Texas Tech. The, the two years before that, and really the NAIL just started then, you know, right. it just started, yes. I think it might've been our first year there when it, 
but nothing was really happening yet. And then it, it, now, now it's flowing. So, you know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's changing things, but, but again, you know, it's the, the schools that have, have the, the resources, uh, not every, everybody has the resources to get majorly involved in the NIL. Yeah. Even in the same conferences, no, I mean, there's, there's a difference big time, big time. I mean, you, you, you look at, you know, the big 10, the sec, uh, you know, the, 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 the schools that are on top, there's a reason that they've always been on top, you know, uh, you know, the good schools usually are the good schools yeah. you know? and, you know, every once in a while they have a down year, but, uh, but the good schools are the good schools and there's reasons for it. Yeah. And it, it's not just NIL. It's, 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 you know, the, the commitment they have to the school, to the program, uh, to the coaching staff, to the, to the players, uh, facility wise, whatever it may be, right. uh, you know, and then there, then there's traditions. I, I go back and I look at, uh, you know, you know, you look at Wisconsin now, everybody thinks Wisconsin was always was Wisconsin. That wasn't, it wasn't. When I, when I first went there, I think they won three games the previous three years in 1990. But when we went there, Barry had a vision. And I always thought, you know, how long, you know, would it take? Because, you know, you have in the Big Ten, you have your Ohio State, you got your Michigans, who've been years, year in and year out, powerhouses, especially when we went to Illinois. Remember, Iowa and Illinois were the first teams, and all of a sudden, in all those straight years, it was Michigan and Ohio State playing for, you know, for the Big Ten title. Then Iowa won it. Then we won it at Illinois. And then, you know, uh, you know, and then, you know, we go we go to Wisconsin, and you know, like I say, three games in three years, and then we're in the we're in the Big Ten championship, our first our first time, uh, our fourth year in the program, we won the Big Ten championship, and and played UCLA in the Rose Bowl and beat them, so we won the championship, won the Rose Bowl, and then uh, you know, then you figure, well, you then we thought, okay, we're we're elite now, we can start recruiting all these players, and may have had our worst recruiting class. Uh, after that first year, and then we got back into how how did we get there? You know, we we recruited a bunch of guys who love football, tough players. And we went back to that philosophy and ended up being, you know, back in the Rose Bowl. And five years later, won the championship, won back to back Big Ten championships, back to back Rose Bowls. And, you know, uh, and then it is what it is. You look at the years now, the success that Wisconsin's had, uh, and you wonder how long it, it takes to build tradition like Ohio State and Michigan had back in the seventies and in, 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 in the eighties. And, uh, and then you look at Ohio state, Michigan, now they still have that. And, and, but, 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 you know, the, the playing surface has changed a little bit. I think it's more balanced now. Uh, you know, there is, there is, uh, you know, schools that could have chances now, but, but again, our success in Wisconsin was one naturally Barry in, in his vision that he had, but, but it was also a uh, commitment from the school. And, uh, you know, but uh, so there, there's a lot of reasons things happen and, and how, how to change programs and how to have success. And, uh, you know, it all starts with players. Yeah, it all starts with players. Any any last. So uh, you and I talked about some stories yesterday and some uh, memories from different things at different places. A anything that you can tell, you know, uh, one last story to wrap it up. You know, it's fun. It's funny. You know, you, you talk about how recruiting's changed through the years. Uh, remember back in the day, we used to go on the road on signing day. And, you know, and, and you went in and at eight o'clock in the morning, you, you, you brought your papers in there. They signed the papers. And uh, so you had to split the staff up because you say you're signing 25 guys. And, you know, in this area, you got to sign these guys, even though they weren't the kids you recruited. But, you know, you, you had to you had to sign them. Yeah. yeah, I remember just, you know, a couple kids, I'm, I won't mention names, but, you know, you knew it was a battle all the way through, you know, and, and so instead of getting there at eight o'clock, going in and signing the guy, you wanted to be the guy, <laughs> I better get here, I better be the first one here, because there's going to be somebody else here too with that same paper. Well, I remember getting to a young man's house at like at five in the morning and camping out in front of his house to make sure <laughs> nobody got there before I did with those papers. Right. And, you know, so, but that's the way it was. And it's not like that now, but, you know. Yeah, everything's, um, everything's electronic now. I, yeah. I uh, 
you and I were on a staff where there was a, a, a guy that was a, a really a, an aggressive recruiter and very creative guy who uh, on signing day put a player in a, in a uh, motel so that he could see he had the, the ground floor motel where the door opened out. And so he'd back his car up against that door. So he couldn't get out. So he couldn't get out to sign with anybody else. Yeah. Was, there were some other ones. And, and, and Coach, I really don't know how we signed any of those kids that we had at that barn party in the winter. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, again, being doing creative things during recruiting, you know, uh, Everybody goes to restaurants. Hey, let's go to a barn and and have a barbecue. You know, I mean, you know, you know, anything that can give you an edge. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, coach, I really appreciate you coming on with me and joining me on on the podcast. Uh, I love you, brother, and and look forward to uh, seeing you and Shelly again, and and your your kids, and uh, and just keeping it rolling, brother. I appreciate you having me on, Rand. It was good seeing you and my best to the family too. Miss you guys. Wish miss you, you see too. Each other more. Thanks, brother. All right. So just want to remind everybody to subscribe to Up On Game Presents on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Please rate and review us uh, and then follow us on all of your social platforms by searching the Up On Game Network you can follow me on Twitter at our Taylor FB Scout. Uh, and don't go to Facebook to find Coach Cosgrove because he's not there. Uh, watch full episodes of Taylor Scouting on the Up On Game Network on the YouTube channel. We really appreciate you and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Coach Cosgrove, I look forward to seeing you soon uh, when we get back out your way. All right, bud. Good seeing you. Thank you. All right, thanks.